Hello, this is Shud Socrates, and welcome to our video for today, which is about classifying systems of linear equations. So we've had several videos already which talk about systems of linear equations. So if you haven't seen those videos, it would be a good idea to watch them first. We will actually be building on some of those examples, modifying them a little bit. So this will also be a good opportunity for you to review what we've learned so far and to kind of check your understanding. So here is what we are going to do today. We're going to talk about consistent versus inconsistent systems. So we've already used those terms and we will of course review them. We will talk about underdetermined, square, and overdetermined systems. So those are new vocabulary words. And we will mostly be dealing with systems that have only three variables. So because of that, we can interpret them geometrically as planes in R3. So let's review the inconsistency test from section 1.5, which says that a linear system is consistent, meaning it does not have any solutions, if and only if the REF of the augmented matrix has a row which is made entirely of zeros, except for one in the final column. And of course, this is an inconsistent system because the left side is zero, but the right side is one. So zero equals one is of course a false statement. The opposite of inconsistent is consistent, and a system is consistent if and only if it has at least one solution. Uh, we can further distinguish between two kinds of consistent systems. We have a consistent system which has an infinite number of solutions, and that's what happens if you have a free variable in the REF, and you will have a consistent system with a unique solution if there is no free variable in the REF. We will also be classifying our linear systems by size. A linear system with n equations in n variables is called underdetermined if m is less than n. That means that the number of equations is smaller than the number of variables. It is a square system if m equals n, the number of equations is the same as the number of variables, and it's called overdetermined if m is greater than n, meaning the number of equations is more than the number of variables. This is how you can tell them apart by looking at their augmented matrices. In an underdetermined system, you have fewer equations than you have variables. So you have fewer rows than you have columns corresponding to the variables. Remember that the right side does not count. This is a square system because you have three equations in three variables. It doesn't look square, but we have three equations in three variables, and that is what makes it a square system. There's an extra column on the right that makes it look not quite like a square. And here you have an overdetermined system where you have five rows and two columns for our variables. So you have more equations than you have variables. So we're going to look at a sequence of six examples, and we will have one more example at the end of this. So let's start with a system with two equations in three variables. So we have our system over here, and of course they correspond to this augmented matrix. You have two equations in three variables, so you have an underdetermined system. There are more variables than you have equations. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to skip over to GeoGebra and see what these equations look like. They are, of course, equations of planes, and we're going to see how they behave in relation to each other. Okay, so I've gone ahead and input our first equation, 5x minus 4y minus 8z is 6, and here is our plane. It's the... Uh, greenish colored surface there. The pink surface is of course the xy plane. So let's input the other equation which was minus 2x plus 3y minus z equals minus 1. Boom! 
And there it is. So we now have these two planes and we can turn this around. And of course, the planes intersect each other. Okay. So that tells us that our system is consistent. And what are we going to do next? Let's look for the solutions to that system. Okay. So let's take our system over here and let's copy it down here. And of course we have to remove the bars and let's go compute matrices REF. Okay, so there we go. We do not have a row made of zero equals one. So our system is definitely consistent. The system is consistent. It passes the inconsistency test or what? It fails the inconsistency test. It is consistent. So there are solutions to the system. Okay, so let's review how to write down the solutions to the system. The first step is to recognize who the leading variables are. And since our leading ones are in the first and second columns, that means that our leading variables are X and Y. So let's write down X and Y are leading variables. And that means that Z is our free variable. So it can be any real number that it wants to be. Now, each of these rows corresponds to an equation. So the first one says that 1x minus 4z is equal to 2. And the second one says 1y minus 3z is equal to 1. And the rule is we solve for the leading variables in terms of the free variables. So x is 2 plus 4z and y is 1 plus 3z, and z is our free variable, so we will write z is any real number. Okay, and I've gone ahead and assembled the solution vector to the system, and so here it appears as xyz is 2 plus 4z, 1 plus 3z, and z, where z is any real number. Now, I also hope that you noticed that this is actually the equation of a line in space, a vector equation for a line in space where z is our parameter. So we can replace that with t, for example, and we can just write 2 plus 4t, 1 plus 3t, and t, and that gives us a parametric equation or a vector equation for our line. So let's go back to GeoGebra and actually plot that line. All right, so if you recall, to plot a line, we use the curve function. So our x is 2 plus 4t. Our y is 1 plus 3t. And our z is t, where t, let's say, will go from negative 2 positive 2. Ooh, there it is. Okay, so does that line match the intersection of those two planes? It does. If you look this way, it almost looks like it's just a point, okay, because that is the line of intersection of those two planes. Okay, so our solution vector is indeed correct. All right, so next let's add a third equation to our system. So I'm going to add 4x minus 7y plus 5z equals 1 as our third equation. We have the corresponding augmented matrix. And I've gone ahead and made a copy of that augmented matrix, removing those vertical bars. Since we now have three equations, we have a square system. So again, it doesn't look like a square. It looks like a rectangle. But what's important is that you have three equations in three variables. All right, so I took you back here to GeoGebra so that we can, we can input our third equation for x minus 7y plus 5z equals 1. Okay, and there it is. And what is happening now? Hmm, so, ooh, so look at that. 
it appears that that third plane that we input also passes through that line of intersection of the first two planes. And we can check that by hiding the first two equations, leaving only the third. And yes, there is that line, and it looks like it also is lying on that plane. Okay, so that makes us suspect that this is still a consistent system. And let's go compute matrices REF and boom, yes, we pass the inconsistency test. There is a row made all of zeros, so there is no one on the right side. So therefore, the system is still consistent. And if you look, this is the same REF that we found in the first example. So actually, the solutions are exactly the same and has exactly the same solutions as the first example. All right, it is still that line that we drew in our first example. All right, so now let's take our second example and change the right side of the third equation from 1 to a 0. So we have a new augmented matrix, and we copy that over here. It's still a square system, of course, because we didn't change the number of equations or the number of variables. It's still three equations in three variables. So let's go back to GeoGebra and see what happens to the plane if we change the 1 to a 0. So all we have to do is change that 1 to a 0. And let's also show the first two equations. So, ooh, I shifted the plane a little bit. So does that mean that it doesn't contain the line anymore? So let's see. We have those two planes. And now it's not clear if the third plane is intersecting the two other planes. So here's another command that we probably haven't played with yet. I can move this display over a little bit so that I can see more of the intersection. So is there exactly one point of intersection now or still that line of intersection? Not really sure. So let's go back to Scientific Notebook. All right, so here we are, and let us look for the REF. So let's remove those vertical bars. Compute matrices REF. Hmm, okay. So now, yeah, it was hard to tell from the diagrams if there was a point of intersection or not it looks like our system is inconsistent. So we have zero on the left and one on the right. So the system is now inconsistent. All right, so for our next example, we are going to change this time the coefficient of one of the variables. We're going to turn z from 5z before to 6z. So let's go back to GeoGebra. We will turn the 5 into a 6. And how does that change our diagram? Hmm. Okay, so it also just moved a little bit. All right. Is there now a point of intersection or a line of intersection? Hmm. Again, not very clear. So let's go do the algebra. All right, so here is the system, and let's go compute matrices REF. Hmm, okay, so this time we don't get 0 equals 1, All right? So we have a consistent system, and notice also that we have three leading variables this time. All three variables, x, y, and z, are now leading variables. So there's exactly one solution, minus 2, minus 2, minus 1. So let's go back to GeoGebra and plot that point. 
we have minus 2, minus 2, minus 1. Hmm, okay, so there is that ball floating in space. And it is, of course, on that line of intersection. It has to be. And is it also on the third plane? So let's hide the first two planes. And is it on that pl on the plane? And it looks like, yes, it is also on that plane. So notice from this view that we can see that the line is no longer on that third plane, but the point minus two, minus two, one is on that plane. Okay, so now we can say that we have a consistent system with a unique solution, and that solution is, of course, minus two, minus two, minus one. All right, so for our next example, we are going to add a fourth equation to our system. So we have minus 3x plus 2y plus z equals 1, and this is now an overdetermined system. So let's go back to GeoGebra and add our fourth plane. And let us show those first two planes again. So let us input negative 3x plus 2y plus z is equal to 1. Okay, so we have those four planes. And is that point of intersection from the first three planes also on that fourth plane? So let's see. Let's hide the first three equations. And yes, that point is also on the fourth plane. It looks like it. So this makes us suspect that it is still a consistent system. So let's go back and do the algebra. So I've copied the augmented system and removed the vertical lines. Compute <coughs> matrices, REF, yes. So we have a row of zeros, not zero equal to one. So it is consistent and it's exactly the same solution. So we have a consistent system with the same solution. Okay, for the last example that has only three variables, we're going to change the fourth equation and we turn the right side from a one to a three. Okay, so it's still overdetermined for equations in three variables. And let's see if we get a solution. So the right side is now three instead of one. And well, first let's show those other points. There we go. So now let's turn one into a three. And let's see. Ooh, ooh, okay. So you saw the plane shift. So it looks like the point of intersection, and it's kind of hiding back there. So let me scoot it over. There we go. So I'm no longer blocking the point. So it looks like that point of intersection is no longer on that fourth equation. Okay, let's see. Hide, 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 and are you there? Nope, the ball is no longer on the fourth equation. Okay, so let's do the algebra. And we got compute matrices REF. And yeah, sorry, we have the bottom row as zero equals one. So therefore, by the inconsistency test, our system is now inconsistent. Okay, so for our final example, I just want to bring back something from our previous video, which was this system. So we have a system of five equations in six variables. So do you remember, is this a 
an underdetermined or an overdetermined system, it's definitely not square. So the answer is underdetermined. There are fewer equations than we have variables. So we have our corresponding augmented matrix, and then let's find the REF. All right, so here is our augmented matrix. I have removed the vertical bars. Let's go compute matrices REF. And yes, we pass the inconsistency test. We don't get zero equals one. So our system is consistent. And let's review. We have a leading one, first column, second column, and fourth column. So x1, x2, and x4 are the leading variables, which means that x3, x5, and x6 are our free variables. What does the first row say? x1 plus 4x3 minus 4x5 plus 3x6 is 0. So solving for x1, we will get negative 4x3 plus 4x5 minus 3x6. All right. Similarly, for the second row, we can solve for x2 in terms of x3, x5, and x6. And we can solve for x4 in terms of x5 and x6. So I've gone ahead and copied our solution from our previous video. So here is what we got. All right, so here's our solution vector, x1 through x6, solving for x1 minus 4x3 plus 4x5 minus 3x6. x2 is minus 8 plus 5x3 plus 3x5 minus 2x6. And x3 is any free, any real number. It's a free variable. x4 is minus 9 plus 8x5 minus 6x6. X5 six. X and x6 are also free. All right, there you have it. That is our video for today. As usual, you can find me in the fourth edition on Facebook and at Kendall Hunt. Dot com. Thank you so much for watching our video and we will see you next time.